Becky McGilliard moved into Epworth about three months ago. She was diagnosed with diabetes when she was only two years old. So that's one of the big pushes in her life is to tell everyone about juvenile diabetes. And also, she told me she's highly educated with not much work experience. Now, I think her story tells us otherwise about that. And so let's let, let's let Becky tell us all about that. Becky, tell us where you grew up and tell us about your childhood. I was born in Ardmore, Oklahoma. I have a brother and 10 or twin sisters. One is deceased and we were all uh, raised in Ardmore. Most of us ended up at the University of Oklahoma. After that, I moved to, with husband, to Chicago, Illinois. And that's where we started our careers together. I left OU lacking a couple of, or maybe more years of education because he got the, the decent job and I was still going to school. So that's what took us to Chicago, or I will say a suburb of, well, according to the older folks who knew Chicago well, we were advised to take uh, an apartment in a very upbeat suburb. And so needless to say, we were the, the lowly people in, in a nice apartment. So at the time I had one child and uh, decided that I needed to do something more than just sit in an apartment with a young child. So I took a job as, actually I think I was, was in land management and I realized that I wasn't much of a typist. So from that point on, uh, decided that I would get involved in the education system in some way. In the meantime, we moved, my husband changed jobs and we moved to St. Louis. So at that time, still thinking about wanting to be involved in the education system, I went to school as a, a classroom assistant. And at that time, St. Louis had a pilot program. I was told, certainly for the Midwest, uh, to serve uh, handicapped and mentally retarded children. Well, that was fascinating to me. So I went to work as a classroom assistant and uh, saw some, some pretty bizarre things. And uh, at that time, I was even more interested in special education. Just little things like we were housed in a different building. We had to walk the children to a special bus and put them on the, the, uh, the bus. So at the same time, I was taking a class at one of the local colleges, had started into things I really liked, which is history. And uh, so I actually started making A's <laughs> instead of, of B's. Uh, and let's see, that well, that's, that kind of, I, I'm hurrying through this. That kind of uh, prompted me to go ahead and get a degree. In the meantime, my husband decided to change careers and my family were oil business related and at the time, there was a big play here in Oklahoma. So we pick up and we move to Oklahoma City. And by that time, I did have a second child who was born in, uh, in St. Louis. 
And once again, we got ourselves enrolled in, in school and I decided that I wanted to finish up this degree. So I actually got my degree after attending William Woods College and uh, I forget my local college in St. Louis, but it, it going, on, going on to, to uh, Oklahoma City. So I actually graduated from the U University of uh, Oklahoma, I mean, uh, at Central State, and uh, then realized that wasn't enough, so I went ahead and started on my master's, and I got that from Ada, and then I realized that that wasn't enough, so I started working on my licensed practical counseling. So I, I have to say that at that time you had to go under supervision and it was pretty costly and I was getting older. So I uh, didn't quite get that certification, but very glad for all the hours that, that I did. Becky, you've done a lot of, of volunteerism and so many things, so many activities you've been involved in in the Oklahoma City area. Would you like to share that with us? Well, again, I, I'm a, a goer and a doer. That's why I chose to go ahead and get out and kind of try to be amongst the people. And so for a while I was, while waiting for teaching positions, I was uh, a volunteer director at Oklahoma Foundation for Disabled, and of course, various social clubs, book clubs. It, it seemed that anytime anybody would suggest something new, I was there. So I uh, have had many fun, informative years with doing things like that, volunteering. I think oh. you, Mercy Hospital. Oh, oh, and I've been a volunteer at Mercy Hospital on and on, mostly on for 12 years or more, so yeah. What, what are your two most important uh, desires or interests in life at this point in your life? Well, again, I've referred uh, several times to being a juvenile diabetic, which when insulin was just discovered shortly after World War I, uh, I have grown with the system, and it's just amazing what, what is, is going on now. I am not a technology buff, but interestingly enough, I, I work the system. If I could, I pull up my blouse and show you all the stuff, but I don't think that would be allowed at this time. But I have had diabetes uh, 75 years, and not many people are lucky enough to, to get to uh, grow within the system. So needless to say, that's probably my main concern, desire, is to help educate Young, young meaning under 21, that's a cutoff. You're considered older or type two if you, you know, are over 21. Juvenile is birth to up to 21. So, yeah. And, and you told me one of your other interests, lifelong interests, is to help other people in need. Absolutely. So, yeah. And why did you move to Epworth? Can you tell us that? <laughs> well, I, it seems that uh, for the last, what would I say, over 10 years that every place I moved had major water damage. <laughs> so this latest uh, move to Epworth was as a result of massive water damage in a townhouse complex and uh, the ice storms just caused massive damage there and so 
the kids, and I didn't even mention my daughters, the, the kids decided I should come to a safer place. And now this is hard not to, to laugh because when we had the big, big water event here, then I just tell people that, that you know, I just float with the, with the program, literally, so. You do have two daughters and I do. how many grandchildren? I, and, and just two grand boys. Uh, one daughter lives here and she is a realtor, left a big job in Arizona to come home and, and that, uh, be with her friends. The other moved to Colorado and she uh, is, always will be a licensed social worker. And so she has always done child care of one sort or another. They said, I have two grand boys. One is, uh, well, he has worked he worked. He he wanted to leave. Everybody wants to leave home, so he wanted to leave Madison, Wisconsin, because he thought he was tired of the school system and go away somewhere that cratered with uh, the corona, and so he got a job still in Madison with uh, an, an organization that tests for corona, and that is part of the grand program which does the 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 colos coloscopes I had one I, the, the one that takes the place of the uh, the a full colonoscopy and uh, they offer a tremendous program and so they tied in with with the corona testing and so I guess basically he's going to be a college professor at the time. The other one is a naturalist, and he uh, grew up with uh, Wisconsin having so many lakes, and, and, and so he was always by the pond and or biking around to the, you can ride to, from downtown Madison and back to his house. So that was, that was his deal. And he goes to school in Tampa, uh, Florida, and he's hoping to be a marine biologist. So that's the children's. So what would you like to tell people at Epworth about your life? I, it sounds like you've done a tremendous amount of things with all of that education, and you've set a good example for your kids, I think. Don't I you agree? I, I certainly hope so. Becky, I have enjoyed hearing about your life and especially about your challenge, your lifelong challenge with diabetes. You have quite a history of your extensive volunteerism and willingness to help others in need. Thank you for sharing your story with us today. <laughs>